So in this video, I'm going to talk about um, or compare and contrast some of the simple ways to write hardware in system C uh, using SC methods um, with some simple ways to write hardware in Verilog. So basically contrasting some of the control constructs in system C and Verilog. So suppose that we want to write uh, a module that's a combinational module that just increments its input by one. So uh, for starters, let's call it inc1.v and let's write this in Verilog. So we'll say we've got a module inc1. Uh, let's say it takes a 32-bit input in uh, and produces a 32-bit output out. And let's write it as using an always block or an always out star block. So this is going to be a combinational module. So uh, we can say always at star begin end, and then we'll say out reg equals in plus one, and then assign out equals out underscore reg. And let's just create a simple Verilog test for this. So inc one tb dot v and we can say module test end module and then initial begin and we'll create our uh, device under test Let's say in in dot out out and we'll say reg 310 in and then wire 310 out and then we'll say uh, in equals zero and then pound one display out equals percent d and then if we do well let's just call it tb and we'll do inc one tb and i'll compile this with icarus verilog uh whoops oh missing arguments sorry uh out uh, and we get that out is one. So this is a pretty, I mean, this is a little bit verbose. We could have just done an assign out equals in plus one, but I wanted to put this always at star in here just to emphasize the contrast with system C. So one of the more basic uh, system C programming constructs is SC method. So if we wanted to implement the same kind of module uh, in system C, let's call it inc one scbp we would do pound includes system C dot H in our C++ file. And then instead of module inc1, we do SC module, uh, let's call it inc1. And then we'd say SC CTOR, which stands for SC constructor inc1. And then we would say, we create a method void, uh, let's call it inc, and we'll give this guy one input. We'll call it SC in, and we'll say it's uh, you know, an SC uint 32, so a 32-bit int, and we'll call it in. And then we'll have an SC out, SC uint out, and we'll say uh, out dot write in dot read plus one will be our ink. And then we'll do this incantation where we'll say sc method inc, and then we'll say sensitive in. So this is an analogous, uh, well, this basic module is the system C analog of this Verilog module inc1, so that this sc method and the corresponding sensitive list um, is pretty much the same functionality as this always at star block with its increment operation. So we can write, uh, you know, an SCTB, let's say pound include uh, systemc.h, and we'll say int main, and we'll also create a header. F Ooh, actually, let's make ink one SC a header. So dot h let's just put it in a header file so that we can include it and we'll say g plus plus inc1 sc tb dot cbp 
And then we've got to include system C. So hold on, uh, include, and we've got to link the system C library so we can actually run this thing. So we'll say system C, uh, which is my system C install location and L system C, and we'll call the executable SCTB. Okay. And so now in the system C test bench, we can say inc one, uh, and let's call this guy the device under test. And let's create an SC signal, SCUint32 in, and we'll say dot dot in is going to be in, dot dot out will be out. And then we can say SC, well, let's say in dot right zero, and then we'll say SC start one and then SC underscore NS for SC nanoseconds. That's just the amount of time that that one argument represents. And then we'll say C out result equals out dot read. And let's uh, include the C++ facilities for writing to the terminal so that this works. And we'll see that the result equals one. And so hopefully these two side-by-side -side examples, this Verilog module for increment one and this system C module to do an increment by one, um, help to clarify that SC methods really are just the system C analog of Verilog always blocks. They're not exactly the same, but they're very close. And so um, the advantage of SC methods in system C is that if you have to write something in system C, but you're accustomed to a language like Verilog and you're a little bit uh, confused about what to do or you're not sure about how to implement something, you can fall back on SC methods as a way to write uh, Verilog-esque system C. On the other hand, the downside is that the advantage of system C is that you can write kind of more abstract models of hardware where maybe the timing is a bit relaxed or it's a transaction level model as opposed to cycle accurate. And so SC methods don't give you much of an opportunity to exploit the unique features of system C, but they're kind of a lower level modeling tool in system C that can be useful if you want a synthesizable model or if you just want to fall back on familiar programming constructs from Verilog. So keep that in mind as you're programming in system C and in future videos, we'll look at some more powerful constructs in System C that don't have perfect analogs in lower level hardware description languages. So I'll see you in the next video.